This is Ceilings of Sound Pro, uh, the Hyper EQ from iIacware. When you first open it up, you, this, you'll see this, it'll come up like this, and this is our, our ceiling mode, and then we have two modes, ceiling mode and EQ edit mode. In EQ edit mode, this is where you'll make all your changes to your, your EQ, and then in ceiling mode, this is where you can create your ceilings and um, to drive the EQ. Uh, and it's also where you'll see your spectrum line and, and you, you'll make one line adhere to the other, your spectrum adhere to your ceilings. All right, so let me reset. Okay, now let me start some music. And I have this set on the vocalist. So this white line is your your sound source. In this case, it's the lead vocal, which I will solo. Okay. Now, if we click anywhere and hold, you can move your spectrum line up and down. If you click on the ceiling line, and, and you can move that up and down. So when you, later on, when you're trying to line up your spectrum with your ceiling, you can do it much easier by making sure they line up, you know, visually. <clears throat> okay, so you have EQ bypass, your conform spectrum to ceiling will be, once you have create a ceiling shape, this is how you'll drive your, your EQ. Like right now, we have just a, uh, a flat, flat line going across. If we did conform spectrum, you can see that it is now conformed our EQ, but it has EQ'd our vocal as white noise, which is not what we want, but that's basically how that works, okay? Uh, the auto-generate ceiling is if you want to create a ceiling of your, whatever your sound source is, just hit auto-generate ceiling and it automatically creates one. And then from there, you can adjust your, your ceiling as, as you wish. And then once you have that shape, you can hit conform spectrum and it will conform your EQ to whatever your ceiling shape is. And you can get very creative so that's not how we want it to sound, but that's how that, that functions. When you, if you click anywhere on the, the ceiling, you can create a, uh, a crossover point. And then this is your frequency. You can adjust it either by moving it here, or you can type in an integer. And if you wish to change your ceiling slope, you can just move it like that, or you can click here and choose one, like you want 22, that's way off there, or, you know, something more like nine, and then just move it around, and then that's how you, you can change them. Live will allow your spectrum to operate more like a live spectrum analyzer, and then you can adjust the, the smoothing, have it at zero, or up to 100%. Now, the cool thing about 100%, you notice how smooth it is, so say that you're like in a mastering, uh, a mastering situation. If you wanted to uh, capture another sound <clears throat> or another song source, but yet you don't want, you want just the, the true overall balance. Set your, your smoothing to 100%, capture it, hit auto-generate ceiling. Now you've captured that sound source. And now when you apply that to yours, it's your EQ is going to operate more like a, a very smooth, like a boxondal type EQ type effect. It'll be very subtle, you know, high, you know, smoothing out of highs and lows and mids. Uh, so it'll, it'll just really be a nice gradual uh, pre EQ going into your compression stage or whatever. So you, and then of course, if you want to have even more uh, intricate, you can capture, you know, a, uh, in 50%, which is the default. All right, freeze just simply, let me reset this. Freeze just simply freezes your spectrum line. So once you, you capture it, 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 you can just freeze it. So now um, it's gonna be a lot easier to work with if you wanna manipulate it by hand. Like you don't have to use the ceiling, the, the ceilings. You can, if you're using ceilings, you can bring in a, um, a, uh, a preset and then conform it or you can just simply move your ceiling out of the way and then bring in, here you have the frequency and slope. These are your ceiling guides. So all of your, 
all of your 49 ceiling slopes that make up each band are also available here as a guide. So if we go and we choose brown, then we can move our brown around and then from there we can see exactly where things are off. This is actually following it very nicely, but say that it wasn't, we would go to EQ edit mode and then we can move a certain frequency and you notice that your, your sound, your spectrum, moves in relationship to your EQ. Because again, it doesn't matter what the shape of our EQ is, it only matters what the shape of our, our sound is. So, and if we want to grab multiple, can bring this over here, if we want to grab multiple uh, frequency points, just simply hold down Control, or you can hold that down Alt, one of the, the two, and then grab as many frequencies as you want, and then you can move them together as a whole. So it's very easy to, to manip manipulate things that way. So say that we, again, now shift back to ceiling edit so we can move. If we try to move the, um, the spectrum line up and down when we're in EQ edit, we'll actually be moving our EQ. So let's go to, say, 7.5. See how everything is in, they're always inherently there. This section is 7.5. This section follows from 1K up, follows 4.5, and then overall follows brown. So if we found out that, uh, let's just say that, that um, you know, our sound was like this, you know, was, you know, that's what our sound was. Well, we would just go in and go, well, you know what, we, we need this to, to, to be up and follow there. And so we can just set it to go right along with 7.5. That's how it's very easy to, to use in manual mode if you're not using your ceilings. And, and I, we actually have some users that they love to just move EQs on their own. So they spend most of their time working this way, bringing up a guide and they're just manipulating the, the EQ which is almost as fast as creating a ceiling and hitting conform. If we wanted to find out what, what the balance of this was down here, your low end, you would go to your, your negatives and let me see, 18, and then you can move that up. Nope, it's not 18. Is it 15? Nope. Is it 12? So you can start to go, you can start to see where things are at and also you know, say if you wanted more, it's, it's not nine, but say that you, you like the, you want a little bit more low end in your, in your, in your, your lower frequencies. Well, then you would ch choose nine and then go in, grab the frequencies, bring them up, kind of smooth that out, shape it as, as you like. You can even bring it up a bit. So now you've added more low end, but yet you are still in balance, in complete balance with your, your perfect sound. So you know what, I like how this comes up. You know, like on some analog gear, it has like a little, it sort of tails up on the low. Okay, again, we're still in complete balance with this perfect sound slope of, of minus nine. All right, so that's how you would use it in, um, without using the ceilings. If you wanted to, to use the ceilings, you could just, Go back to empty. Again, hit auto generate ceiling. It creates one and you can say, you know what? I like that. You know what? Let me see here. I want more of a rock sound. So let's, let's bring this up and I want this to follow more pink. So let's bring that up here. I said, I want that on pink. And then from, actually, you know what? Let's say we want it on pink from there. And then from 1K, we want to follow brown noise, all right? So we can say drop it down a bit. So now that is in, in balance with brown noise. Just hit conform. And there we go. Now, in, if that's what we wanted in the music, If we like that, then we would keep that. If we want to make other adjustments, we could. But that's how you would use, that's how you use the ceilings. It's, you can work however. There's no wrong way to use this EQ. You can either use the ceilings to drive the EQ process. You can use the presets of the ceilings to drive the EQ process. Or you can just simply 
bring in your guides and manipulate the EQs by hand. They are all incredibly efficient, incredibly quick, saves a lot of time, and you can work by, by lining things up. We go back to this. If you, let me go back to brown here. So you can see that since we're lining up visually, we can actually work with our volume off. Let me turn it down here, boop. So now we're in absolute silence and we can still know exactly what is going on. So we go, you know what? I want this whole thing to follow brown noise. So we go in here, grab all this, bring that up to brown. We're at brown. Now we need to drop this down here. And now the whole thing is in balance with brown noise. And if we bring the volume back up. You're my special girl. Before. You're on my mind. Can't stop loving you. You're my kind of girl. So incredible. In. Don't be afraid to show So again, it doesn't sound bad because we're, we're in complete balance with brown noise. It's just a little bit a little bit warmer because the whole thing is now following brown noise. And and that's it. If we wanted more of a uh, like a, a rock type sound, we could say from from 2. Point, from 23 uh, 20, 240 to 500. We want that to follow pink. Bring that up, You're my special girl. and then say okay. Can't stop loving you. You're Balance my kind of girl, so incredible. Don't be afraid to show it to. Can't stop loving you. And there you go. You're so the the sound girl. itself. So a, a lot of people ask <clears throat> where, you know what noise guides do I use, you know, when and where? Well, the, the beautiful thing is the, the, the sound itself, if you recorded a sound that you like the sound of, the sound itself will show you what it is. It's gonna be close to these anyways, because at the end of the day, all sound is just noise, and it's made up of noise, just like every picture is made up of, of hues of the spectrum of light. Every picture is perfect color, it's just different hues, but there's not a different green, a different brown. There's not gonna be a different, you know, 2K or a different, you know, 100 hertz. It's just gonna use different colors of noise. So each section of it is gonna show you. And when you bring up your guides and line them up, you'll see that you're, you'll see if something is right there already, or if it's close, and then you can just manipulate it from there. You can say, okay, well, you know, I, you know, I, I like how it sounds more, uh, how we just did from 240 to, to 500. I, I want a little bit less of that, of that chest sound, which is that 240. And so instead of following brown, we made that, that section follow pink. So, and if, if we, that's a little bit too much, we can go, okay, well, you know, maybe not pink. Well, you were right in between, you have 4.5. So you could say, okay, instead of, I like how that's gonna sound a little bit better. Let me go in here and just bring that up. Play it. So exceptional. So, Don't be okay, say for the song. Okay, so say that that's what, okay, that's right where we like, where we like it. That's kind of what we're going to. We didn't, we didn't want quite as much low end as, as following the, you know, brown all total, uh, but, but going, you know, following, you know, pink from 240 to 500 was a little bit too much of a, a low end cut, you know, too less uh, chest. So let's follow the 4.5. So all of these ceilings, they're inherently in everything because everything is inherently noise. So it's very easy to do. Now you can, you can do this manually. I personally love to work this way with it. Um, if, I'm, if I create a, um, I have a big project and, and, uh, and the, you know, the vocalists we use, the, you know, they really cut all their, their tracks like in a day. So they, you know, 
and they really didn't get uh, they didn't get uh, vocal fatigue. So they used the same mic. We didn't make any adjustments to the mic pre. You know, they basically you know a good good singer. They they had they were always at the same distance. Everything kind of sounds the same. I can create a preset. Uh, and save that a ceiling preset and then when I go to every other one I just bring up that singer's preset boop hit conform and then maybe make you know subtle adjustments if need be from there but basically boom there you go and so it's going to cut a lot of time do all of their vocals very very quickly very very efficiently um, but you know if someone just brings in a one song uh, I have one song and I'm doing a, I have to do a mix on it or I'm doing a remix or whatever then I'll bring up a you know, bass and I'll follow, you know, you know, darker, you know, uh, heavier weight slopes, uh, ceiling slopes. Uh, and that's another thing to keep in mind. The, the more extreme the tilt, the darker, more low end the sound will have. Like, you know, uh, bass sounds are going to be, you know, they're going to use a, a, a lot steeper slope. They might use, you know, minus 7.5 or even minus 9. Uh, and 808 is obviously going to be even more. And plus, the, the steeper the slope, the, the less high end you have, the, the further a sound will sound like it moves back in the mix. So if you're trying to tuck uh, a sound back, like, you know, this vocal sounded great, but I wanted to tuck it back into the mix, well, the... Instead of brown, if I if all of a sudden I use you know a seven minus seven point five or a nine, it's just it's going to get much darker and it's going to move back in the in the mix, and and create depth and distance. Um, adversely, if I'm if you're doing an, uh, a hi hat, well then you'll just you'll use your slants in the other ways. You would use inverted brown. So let's let's go to that right now. As a matter of fact, so let me bring up a hi hat. Go to the hi hat track here. All right, let me just play this. And you can see that we have, uh, we use the 808, the hi-hat 8082 on this one. And you can see that regardless of where it was, for this, so for this song, um, this is the shape we wanted. And even from there, let's say that we wanted to start from scratch. Let's go to nothing. All right, whoops, okay. Well, we're just looking at the at the raw file that I was given. If we go in here and do inverted um, pink, okay. Well, that's that's a little much. Let's move the. It's not quite where it was. Inverted 1.5, and you can see it's basically following that anyways. So if we want more high end, let's go. We would go to inverted pink, and then of course we could go in here and then. Manipulate our, our EQ. Let's start at 1K. Bring that up. Go in here and maybe smooth this out. You know, so that's, oh, watch our volume. So as adversely as, as you go, um, as you start using inverted, inverted slopes, you're gonna have more high end and that's where like, you know, like uh, very sizzly 808 hi-hats or, you know, just experiment, you know, uh, but that's how you use the inverted, the inverted slopes as, as overall guides. Uh, they, they really come in handy for like cymbals and hi-hats, especially hi-hats. Shakers, that's ceilings of sound, hyper EQ. There's no wrong way to use it. If you utilize the ceilings, again, we're using noise to drive the EQ process. It's, you really can't make it sound bad because each section is perfect sound. It'll, it, it'll just sound different. Um, and it's a lot of fun. You can experiment with it and, and make EQ moves that you normally wouldn't have made before if you're using your ceilings. Because traditionally with EQs, you know, we, you have so many, so many bands and you have your cue settings and you're, you're going to kind of do the same moves. But with driving it with a ceiling, you could create wild shapes and immediately hit conform. And you can find these lucky accidents that would be, you know, that all of a sudden like, whoa, that's really cool in the mix.